Hey everyone and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at this. Um, these are, uh, well this is a power MOSFET module that you'll typically find on a 3D printer to uh, heat up the either the, the heated bed or the extruder or both, or uh, the hot end I should say, or both. All this is supposed to do is take the signal from your 3D printer's board so you'd plug this in where the heated bed is on your 3D printer. You would plug the main power uh, on these two terminals, plus and minus, and then you would put your heated bed on here. So basically you'll have a low current path from your board to this, and then a high current path uh, from your power supply through this MOSFET and out to your heated bed. Now the benefit of this is that you could use a lower cost uh, 3D printer main board that doesn't have a super fancy MOSFET on it or uh, simply you can upgrade to this MOSFET which is supposed to be more fancy and able to handle the current more and plus there's a little bit more room on this board to handle the heat dissipated by the MOSFET. So the MOSFET in question here is an HA, I don't know if you can see that, it's an HA210N06. And this is actually a relatively high quality MOSFET. I mean, as far as I can see by the data sheet, mind you, I'm not an expert in these things. Uh, this thing is rated to go up to 210 uh, amps at 60 volts. Um, but obviously that would be with a big heat sink and, you know, active cooling. This thing has a, you know, moderate, relatively small heat sink, but I mean, it's, it's reasonable. But the thing is that these modules are cheap. I think pre pandemic, this was like two or three bucks and there's quite a few components on here. And actually it's quite intelligent the way it works. I'm going to zoom you in so we can take a look. Keeping stuff in focus will be very hard. I'm really sorry. I need more powerful lights for that or, you know, a, a smaller sensor on the camera. But that's a long ways away, my friends. So, um, so this here, this is the two wires coming in from your 3D printer board. Now, in case you didn't know, the heated bed on a 3D printer acts kind of like a light bulb, meaning it's not polarized. So you can flip the wires any which way and send the current in any direction that you want and it won't affect anything positively or negatively. It doesn't care. So how do you um, deal with a polarized device like a MOSFET where uh, this is an N-channel MOSFET so it needs a positive voltage on the gate? Well, over here you have a bridge rectifier. So it doesn't matter the polarity of the incoming wires. So you can plug this however you want on your um, 3D printer mainboard. And it's very interesting because they give you a polarized plug. So this is a plug that only fits in one way. So you would think that these wires need to be addressed a certain way. They don't. Another interesting thing here is that they even give you an optocoupler. So you're not actually giving voltage directly to the gate from your um, from your 3D printer uh, heated bed output, you are actually lighting up a tiny LED, probably an infrared LED, inside of this package, and that LED is shining on a transistor on this side, which will take your voltage in here, and it'll switch your voltage in on onto the gate of the MOSFET. So you're actually using a very low current signal from your 3D printer's main board and, and then switching this power supply. So it seems to me like your 3D printer can actually use a different power supply than the one you're going to be supplying power with here. So if you had, I don't know, if you had a, a heated bed which used a lot of current for example, you could have one power supply for the hot end and the extruder and the electronics and everything and a different hot end or a different um, power supply to power your heated bed. That also means if you are running a 12 volt system on your 3D printer, you could still run a 24 volt heated bed. 
Now that's pretty cool. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near 200 amps through this thing, but apparently with a 10 volt um, gate voltage, uh, VGS, so gate source voltage, this thing has a 4 milli ohm on resistance. So this is a fairly good uh, MOSFET. I mean, if it's legit, who knows? Here also you have really big, I think these are uh, M3 or M4 screws with these little uh, clamps here. So that's pretty good. The current path is extremely short. As you can see here, the uh, positives are common. So there's the two positives. See that pad there? There you go, probably seeing the light. Okay, they're common. And then the negatives are switched. So that's pretty neat. And then over here, our optocoupler. Um, oh, it looks like this might be the gate track here. You see the small track? So gate. And then I forget which one is drain, which one is source. If I don't have a, um, uh, a schematic in front of me. But uh, that looks like that is the gate which comes around here and looks like it comes from over here. Yeah, see this this pad here? I don't know if you can see that. Comes around and over to here. Uh, there's also an LED here, which I presume this LED will tell you when your hotbed is heating. And there seems to be resistors here probably to drop the voltage and regulate the current going to the optocoupler. So yeah, this is a neat module for, for what you get for the price. Let's see it in action. Hopefully you can see the little uh, panel here. Uh, so this is set up to pull 15 amps from this MOSFET. MOSFET is being fed by 24 volts from the Reedin RD6018. Uh, current limits at 18 uh, amps, so we should be fine. Um, I've got these crock clips. We're gonna grab the 24 volts directly from here to turn on the transistor. So yeah, hopefully this will all work. I also have the temperature sensor uh, stuck to the side of this um, uh, heat sink here. I think it's the CPU temp that you have to be looking at because the, I played with the sensor and the fan temp didn't move. So I think it's the CPU temp, not sure. I mean, we'll figure it out. So first things first, I will turn on the electronic load. And right now it is seeing uh, five volts. Is that possible? I don't know. Um, it is using uh, the four wire measurement here, but let's see, let's turn on the power supply, see what happens. Okay, seeing nine volts now, quite interestingly. I'm just gonna tap this. Ah, there's a little LED here that turns on. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, it's right there. There we go. Oh, interesting. All right, let's plug it in and see what happens. So here it goes, we've got 24 volts. We're not pulling any current though. I do have this on. Oh, here we go. We are now pulling the full 15 amps. And here we go, fan temp is rising, so is CPU temp. That's interesting. I guess it needed to be bootstrapped. I don't know. Doesn't matter, but we are pulling lots of current. So 360 watts. That's a, it's a pretty powerful heated bed right there. Still 15 amps. We are, you know, nearly 24 volts through. It says uh, 48 fan temp. I think that's the load. I don't think it's this. No, this heatsink, ice cold. That's crazy. I'm a little bit afraid to overheat the reed in here, but uh, we'll keep at it a little bit longer. It says we're up to uh, 28. I don't think this sensor is well calibrated because that's not 28. Honestly, that is still pulling heat out of my fingers. So this thing is still ice cold. Plus, I mean, I guess it, it only rose a degree or so. I'm sorry about the flickering lights, by the way. That's just the uh, the LED strip light. I need to take it down and um, you know resolder it. So far, so good, though. 
Uh, looks like the approximate on resistance is 1.58 ohms. I'm wondering if the gate is getting its full, um, you know, 10 volts from the uh, optocoupler there. But yeah, this thing, I mean, it's not even warm yet. I think my fingers are doing more to affect that heat sink. So, like, I believe that this MOSFET is actually a fairly high quality one. And for just a couple dollars, it's pretty impressive what you can get. And plus, the board is already ready. You could probably just power this by an Arduino. Uh, and you can probably just... I mean, I, f I feel like the Arduino's 5 volts might be enough to even uh, power this thing on. Because all it has to do is turn on that um, optocoupler. I'm going to check the heat sinks on the load here. So the heat sinks on the load are getting quite warm. Yeah, they're warm. So they might be up in those, you know, the package temperature might be in the 70 degrees. I would believe that. But this MOSFET? Nah, not at all. Oh yeah, I feel, I feel the heat coming off these fans. Looks like we're doing just fine. Let's, uh, let's kick it up a notch here. 17 amps. Now, we're getting close to the uh, top of the read-ins range here. I feel the heat going crazy out of these things. But are we still good here? Yeah, this MOSFET handling it no problem. It's not even my body temperature yet. It's almost there, but not quite. This is impressive. It's unfortunate that I can only pull um, how much how much power are we at? At 400 watts here. This is a 600 watt load. I wish I could pull 600 watts. I just don't have the power on this side. But I'm just curious on how this how this MOSFET handles. And this is this is pretty ridiculous. It's handling it just fine. Yeah. There's no way I'd be able to hold that MOSFET if it wasn't fine. This is pretty good. I'm going to run it for a couple more minutes. Don't really like my read-in um, going full bore like this because I love the read-in, but I guess it's a valid test for the read-in too. Because the read-in is pushing 405.5 watts and we are pulling uh, 401 watts here. The uh, rest of it will be dissipated in the wires and uh, the connections and the MOSFET. That MOSFET heatsink is now a little bit warmer than my hands. The just the heat coming off these this load's heatsink is insane. The uh, MOSFETs on the heatsinks here. They're up to 80 degrees. All right, I'm pulling it. So there we go. Everything is uh, pulled off now. Our voltage is sunk. It looks like there's still residual uh, power left in here because the uh, little MOSFET is uh, the little LED is on, but I don't know if that's just the main power here or if the heated bed. But either way, we're getting 5 volts of leakage voltage through here. So I guess that's what's happening. And now we see quickly the uh, load temperature is dropping. And it'll sink down to an acceptable temperature and then these fans will turn off. But this, this MOSFET's barely even warm. And there's no active cooling on here. There's no fan, nothing. So if you wanted to put a little fan blowing across a couple of these things, you'd be perfectly fine. And there we go. This is off. Um, fan temperature now at uh, 31.4. 33 under MOSFET heatsink. That's not 33 though because now it is cool to the touch. So this uh, temperature sensor has to be calibrated. It just has to be adjusted. But other than that, this thing worked flawlessly. Here's a question that might be asked. Could a 9 volt battery activate this MOSFET? Only one way to find out. Got 24 volts through here. Yep. 
works just fine. Another maker sent me this Arduino Mega for an LED and that's what it's doing, blinking an LED and it is not enough to turn on this MOSFET. So you need somewhere between 5 and 9 volts to get it to turn on. So that's it. Uh, this little MOSFET is incredibly impressive, especially for the few dollars that it that they cost me. Um, I will put affiliate links if you want to get your own today, but I almost guarantee you they're going to be a little bit more expensive. There are also a few different options these days. There are some that claim to be able to dissipate even more power. Unfortunately, it's not in the budget to go get them. Um, maybe in the summer if my uh, work stuff is actually sorted and you know they allow me to do work um, then maybe we'll gather a few and um, you know test out the actual temperature rise on them control the environment all this kind of stuff but you're gonna have to let me know if that stuff interests you at all because if that's a snooze fest I'm just gonna do it for me and maybe just for my patreons thanks for watching